Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests are from the current exhibition coming up at Gilded Pear Gallery. Lauren Tucci, gallery manager, and Ellen Kleckner, featured artist. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Dennis. Hello. Uh, Ellen, you've been here before in your role as director of the Iowa Ceramics Center. Yes, but I have. So nice to be able to talk to you about your own work. Yes, thank you very much for having me today. Yeah, very cool. So the, uh, the exhibit is called Juncture, mm -hmm. and you are, I said, a ceramicist. I am. And um, I tend to work in other materials as well. Okay. So um, actually every piece in this exhibition um, has an, another multimedia component to it. So okay. if it's um, ceramics and um, woven reed baskets on top or ceramics and wood or wood and steel. Um, so while my foundation as an artist is ceramics, it's how I was educated. It's what I'm trained in. It's part of the work I do every day in this Iowa Ceramic Center working with the ceramics community. But I tend to bring in other materials as well as the knowledge of other artisans to help me create pieces. So Juncture um, is really sort of about those connections and bringing two materials together or sometimes more to create a new piece that you would never really expect to be um, seen. So then in yeah. addition to uh, what's happening in each piece with the ceramics, did you do the woodwork, the metal work, all of I that? Did, um, a lot of the metal work I did, I did, I was able through um, a grant from the Iowa Arts Council to enlist the help of several artists within Cedar Rapids who have the expertise in steel and then um, wood to be able to help me create some of the larger pieces. Oh, okay. So it was pretty neat to be able to work with these artisans collaboratively to really, um, and take their expertise to help me realize my visions of things that were just, um, you know, more than my expertise, but I knew that I wanted. So one of the, the feature piece in the exhibition is um, about a six foot tall plinth with um, a large timber, poplar timber on um, bottom that's dovetailed into this very large um, steel outline of the timber piece. So it's yeah. it's a beautiful piece. And I worked um, with artist Mike Sneller on that to fabricate the steel and I fabricated the um, wood timber that's on the bottom. When you, so when you, you do that, you've got the concept uh -huh. and you figure it out, but then you, you know, you bring in someone to, you know, lend a hand in yep. some of this. Does the piece ever change in that process from your original vision? Sometimes it does because there can be restraints to the materials itself like that oh, I want to use. There could oh, be just something that's yeah. like, well, metal can't quite <laughs> bend that way. Or sometimes there's an additional, hey, like I could do this finish to it. So um, Mike was really great to be able to work with because he just had such a knowledge of um, steel, even just talking about the different options for the finish was something that I hadn't, I was like, okay. And we talked through that and really um, worked with me to say, well, you know, this is what I can, um, the different finishes and then me t taking those suggestions into consideration and making decisions and I'm yeah, so, so I'm, I'm so sorry Ellen but what you want is physically impossible no yeah, so, no no physical material well can there do was that. um at one point I had kind of wanted to turn things upside down and change orientation of things and it just wasn't physically possible but it these was pieces, technically physically possible but yeah a little dicey to display but the great thing is that it also prompts ideas for future projects and then I was able to also work with artist John Schwarzkopf on some of these larger um, rocking bowl forms. So it's um, they're actually um, inspired by um, rocking forms of sort of traditional woodworking, and then but they're large rank bowls that are placed on top. So I worked hand on hand with him. Oh yeah. And so he has his expertise, and we he makes everything around him better. I bet. Yes. So it was great, but um, his. That experience of working with him was amazing because our studios are in the same building, our entry building, and so he was able to be like, Ellen, just come over and check out this angle. Like, and so I was able to make the decisions about the exact placement that I wanted the rails to be. Every single decision in the, along the way was um, mine, but with his knowledge of, okay, well, we can do it this way or this way. And um, he was, he's always been a wonderful collaborator that I've worked with over the years. And so it was really great to work on that project with him as well. Lauren, tell me about the challenges and or joys of, uh, of, of, of staging a show, placing it in the gallery, you know, with three-dimensional art as opposed to, you know, art that you're just hanging on the wall. Yeah, it is quite different. Um, and especially with some of the more inventive forms that you have. Um, so 
there's not always like the perfect pedestal that works for something that has a large rocker on the bottom of it. You know, we don't always have that like ready to go. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, a standard size and it's, it's all quite different than like just hanging a series of uh, canvases or paper pieces on the wall. Um, well, you have to make sure that the things are affixed in a sturdy fashion so they don't get mm-hmm. knocked over. Yep, yep. That's definitely yeah. a consideration also with ADA and kind of making sure that the objects also have enough space around them. Um, but because Ellen has 2D pieces and dimensional objects this time around, um, that was really interesting to play with and be able to talk to you with uh, mm-hmm. on, on which of the collage pieces that are on paper uh, interact with the different objects Mm -hmm. because they interact with specific ones. So, yeah, but it is a little challenging when uh, you've got a big wide rocker on the bottom that moves actually that that moves (laughs) and that is not (laughs) not it is not a fixed piece (laughs) but gilded pair has always been such an amazing lauren and susie and linda to work with um because they're just like yes like let's try it let's let's like let's see what happens and if i'm like what about this giant six foot sculpture in the middle of the um gallery like yep let's try it and so and they've always been very generous with space to give a lot of times when you have larger pieces, you need sort of the space for them to be able to have be well, seen to, on their own. To look at it, you have yeah. to be able to just to stand back mm-hmm. and see it. You want to see it both close up and from a distance. And mm-hmm. so you do have to figure out a way oh, to yeah. make that work in your space. Yeah. And, and what I just love about the gallery is I've, I've shown um, in galleries across the country. And this is really one of the most unique spaces. Um, they have sort of different levels to the in front and there's kind of different little sections and so you're able to make these different little almost vignettes within the space and so it's just such a wonderful gallery to show in and um, a lot of my work relates to domestic to domestic spaces and um, although can't always be shown like what it would look like in a a home um, or furniture being in a space that's not just a white cube of a gallery it's really warm and um, I think it's just such an interesting space to go and see an exhibition, no matter what it is, as well as all of the other 2,000 pieces of artwork that they have in the space. So the show is about you. It's okay. I know, <laughs> but it is it is a really interesting gallery to um, to show in and to work in. It has its own little quirks, but it ultimately, it's way more interesting as an artist to kind of figure out placement within those spaces than just a simple white cube. Yes, Lauren, you do really do a you and and. Uh, uh, and the gang all do a really good job of of of, ta- of making creating all alcoves, but not making it closed in. It's still it's still yeah. open, and yet, oh yes, this is the area where this is happening, and that's very cool. Yeah, thanks. We I agree. That. The so. show is up right now. It is. Yep, and runs through the end of November. But reception coming up uh, on the twenty second. Correct. Yep. Yep. Friday from five to seven thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we should have a good. Nice turnout and Mm -hmm. to see the spaces um, with these different sort of sculptures as well as the works on paper. I think it's a really exciting new direction for my work and um, such a pleasure to be able to have it in the Gilded Pair Gallery. And uh, normal safety protocols that you've been doing in place and uh, the are pretty is pretty much everything up on the website, too, if people aren't comfortable quite with uh, coming to a public event. Yep. And um, we'll have the video that we do here um, listed on the website, too. Um, and some uh, photos of the show will also be posted probably later today or tomorrow. Um, so if anybody wants to browse the space, see how they look uh, without actually being there. Although I do recommend seeing the pieces in person this time around because we kind of danced around it. But um, there's some really subtle paper pieces, um, the shellac yeah. collage pieces that are like almost impossible to photograph. Um, so they're definitely worth trying to stop in even if it's not at the reception but maybe at a time that's more comfortable sure if crowds yeah. aren't crowds aren't your thing these days sure. and we certainly understand that there are plenty of opportunities for yep. you know people to come and browse on their yeah. at their leisure yep and the works on paper are a really new um direction and they were it was wonderful to work with gilded pair gallery and just how those would even be displayed they're kind of things that were more sketchbooks and um i developed through uh, my own process of doing studies for my larger sculptures, but they're framed beautifully and they are really interesting, I think, to see in connection to the sculptures themselves too. The exhibit is Juncture, 
at the Gilded Pear Gallery running through the 27th of November. But public reception and a chance to see Ellen and have her tell you about the art in person Friday the 22nd of October uh, from 5 until 7. Uh, and uh, or did I say, oh, sorry, 7.30. Okay. And uh, Ellen, or <laughs> Lauren, before we go, I want to give us just uh, just the very briefest thought about what's coming up for the holidays. I'm sure you've got some, I'm sure you already have that all planned and We're ready to lay out. We're trying to do out. things early this year. <laughs> so we do, um, we'll have a section upstairs because we have a second floor gallery space uh, dedicated to more um, smaller pieces. Uh, so it'll be called the Holiday Shop and that will be also listed online as well as in person. Um, we'll post some holiday hours soon. Uh, we don't know what they're they are just yet, um, but probably by the end of this month. Um, so the the big Christmas kind of push or, or the available pieces are going to start um, November 1st. And then we always have our kind of jewelry so- showcase at the end of the year, too. If people want to see what you've got photos of online or get more information about the gallery or anything like that, they can visit your website, which is? GildedPearGallery.com. Lauren Tucci and Ellen Kleckner. Thanks so much for being with me today. Thanks. Thanks, Dennis. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org or however you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.